As NASA works towards its long-term goal of establishing a human settlement on Mars, SpaceX is flushing out its plans to help NASA make that dream a reality. The private spacefly company, which regularly launches cargo to the International Space Station with the Falcon 9 rocket, and will soon launch astronauts up there, is currently building an interplanetary spacecraft for Mars, known as Starship. The rocket-spacecraft combo will be able to launch 100 passengers and large amounts of cargo to and from the Red Planet. With this said, how does a SpaceX Starship hope to sustain life on Mars, and what complications may arise? Let's find out. Before Starship can launch to Mars, it will start off launching commercial satellites as early as 2021, followed by a crewed flight around the moon in 2023. Although SpaceX has not given a timeline for its first missions to Mars, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has said that the first Mars base could be up and running in 2028. And while Musk shared some eye-catching artist illustrations depicting what he called Mars Base Alpha as an intricate network of buildings and infrastructure, SpaceX's plans for the Red Planet are not quite that extensive. SpaceX is very much a transportation company, Paul Wooster, the principal Mars development engineer at SpaceX, said. During a speech at the Humans to Mars Summit in Washington in May, he explained that the SpaceX plans to build whatever infrastructure is necessary to support the company's Starship flights to and from Mars. That could include landing pads and refueling stations for the reusable rockets. For its very first Mars mission, SpaceX will land at least two uncrewed cargo ships on the Red Planet before sending any humans there, Wooster said. Those cargo missions would bring supplies, such as life-supported systems and power generators, that the first astronauts on Mars will need when they set up camp. The first uncrewed Mars missions will also be tasked with confirming the presence of natural resources that can provide fuel for future two-way missions to the Red Planet, Wooster said. SpaceX wants to use water ice from the planet's surface and carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere to refuel starships on Mars, enabling the rockets to return to Earth. After those first two cargo missions, SpaceX will launch two crewed missions alongside two additional cargo-only flights to begin setting up a propellant production plant. At that plant, water and carbon dioxide will be converted into liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which fuel the rocket's engines. So, while SpaceX intends to set up a transportation system for humans and cargo traveling to the Red Planet, the company won't be building an entire Mars base on its own. Musk has laid out his vision to create a million-person colony on Mars, but to establish that colony, SpaceX will have to work together with NASA and the agency's international partners and other commercial space companies. Several companies have already begun designing concepts for Mars habitats and have proposed orbital outposts similar to NASA's Lunar Gateway, which could serve as a waypoint for Starship and reduce the amount of fuel needed for return trips to Earth. Elon's intent in founding SpaceX was to enable humanity to become a multi-planet species, allowing us to establish cities on Mars and to inspire people. Hoppy Price, chief engineer of NASA's robotic Mars exploration program, spoke with Booster at the Humans to Mars Summit, suggesting that NASA is interested in SpaceX's Starship. However, the agency won't be fully committed to using Starship for its first human Mars missions until SpaceX has proven that the vehicle is ready for flight. NASA is also considering using its own Space Launch System Mega Rocket for Mars, but the development of that new rocket has faced years of delays. We're quite happy to help out NASA in their overall plans for going to the Moon and Mars, Wooster said, adding that SpaceX must first focus on testing Starship to make sure it can leave Earth and return safely. Wooster said SpaceX is still on track to start launching humans to Mars in the mid-2020s. That time frame likely has something to do with the fact that the next suitable launch windows based on the positions of Earth and Mars, will occur in 2024 and 2026. But while SpaceX is known for its ambitious ideas, Musk also has a history of offering ambitious timelines. Before we'll really know when the first Starship missions can launch to Mars, SpaceX will first have to prove that the rocket can get there safely. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk went into a bit more detail about the timelines and vehicle requirements to not only reach Mars, but to set up a sustainable base on the Red Planet that can serve as an actual city, supporting a local population. That's the long-term vision for Musk and his space technology company, after all, making humans an interplanetary species. The timeline that Musk discussed replying to fans on Twitter might be incredibly impressive or incredibly ambitious, depending on your perspective. Addressing a question about comments he made recently at the U.S. Air Force Startup Pitch Day event in California, Musk said that his stated launch cost of only around $2 million per Starship flight is essentially required, should the final goal be to set up a self-sustaining city on Mars. In order to make that city a reality, he said, SpaceX will need to build and fly around a thousand Starships, according to his estimates, which will need to transport cargo, infrastructure, and crew to Mars over the course of around 20 years. 
Since planetary alignment only really allows for a realistically achievable Mars flight once every two years, Musk addressed more near-term potential for Starship as well, including how much payload capacity Starship will provide for Earth orbital transportation. Starship's design is intended to maximize reuse, and in fact, Musk noted that ideally, it can fly up to three times per day. That amounts to more than 1,000 flights per year per Starship, which means that if they end up with as many Starships as they currently have built Falcon rockets, and those each transport as much as 100 tons to orbit, then on an annual basis, SpaceX will be able to launch upwards of 10 million tons to orbit per year. To put that in perspective, Musk points out that if you take all cargo-bearing spacecraft currently in operation into account, the total payload capacity is just 500 tons per year, with Falcon series rockets from SpaceX itself making up around half of that. That's a lot of payloads. In fact, it's probably more than there will be in demand for in any near-term timescale. But it's also true that Musk envisions a future where orbital space is a much busier place, and a staging ground for orbital cargo transfer and refueling as Moon and Mars-bound spacecraft ready themselves for the outward journey. The complications that may arise. If SpaceX aims to put people on Starship for an extended period of time, things become much more complicated. Life support systems add weight and complexity to the vehicle, Astronauts need places to exercise and sleep, air to breathe, and water to drink. And if Starship is supposed to start a lunar base, which Musk has proposed numerous times, then the higher radiation environment on the moon will require advanced forms of shielding. All these problems will be heightened when sending crews to Musk's stream destination, Mars. Due to the long distance, astronauts won't get resupply missions for years, and they will have communications delays with Earth. Radiation exposure will become even more severe, and it's unclear how that will affect the human body. Musk has addressed life support and human health in his Starship talks before, but only briefly. In his most recent presentation, the SpaceX CEO was asked twice about the types of life support systems that Starship would use. I don't think it's actually super hard to do that relative to the spacecraft itself, Musk said. The life support system is pretty straightforward. A life support system encompasses all of the things needed for humans to fundamentally survive here on Earth. Anything that keeps the crews alive and functioning and keeps the environment safe for them is really the life support system. John Cover, the deputy system manager for the International Space Station's life support system at NASA, tells The Verge, The most basic necessity is the atmosphere. Life support systems must supply the right mixture of gases for people to breathe and remove carbon dioxide from the air before it builds up to a dangerous amount. The right temperatures and atmospheric pressure have to be maintained. Astronauts will need drinking water along with a place for wastewater to go. SpaceX already has some experience with life support systems with its new crew capsule called Crew Dragon, which is designed to take astronauts to the International Space Station. However, providing life support for such a short trip to orbit is much different than the one that's needed to keep people alive for weeks and months in deep space. For one thing, both oxygen and water can be supplied in infinite containers on a trip to orbit, just enough to get people to their long-term destination. On the International Space Station, though, where people live for months at a time, a regenerative system is in place for things like oxygen and water, meaning they're recycled in a closed-loop system. Urine and sweat are recycled and turned back into drinking water, while some of the water is split apart into oxygen and hydrogen in a process known as electrolysis, so that people can breathe. Musk did say that the life support systems on Starship would be regenerative, but life support systems tend to be heavy and complex, changing how the vehicle would operate. And figuring out how to keep people safe in emergency situations is also key. Once you start talking about putting crew in there, you need to start talking about the hazards and how those hazards unfold, says Cover of turning a cargo ship into a crewed ship. Musk claims that people will be able to fly to space on Starship as early as next year, which means figuring out the life support system should be a priority in the months ahead. The technology exists today, so it is possible that they could hit their ambitious timeline. But SpaceX does not have much documented experience with regenerative life support systems. The Crew Dragon's life support system is not regenerative, and even so, no people have actually flown on the vehicle yet. Staying alive on the lunar surface. Things become even hairier if SpaceX wants to establish a long-term presence on the moon. For one thing, the longer people live away from Earth, the more exposure they have to deep space radiation and galactic cosmic rays. These are highly energetic particles that emanate from the sun or distant sources outside our galaxy. They can pierce through skin and other materials, causing damage to biological tissues. The Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field help shield us from the majority of this radiation, but out in deep space and on the moon, that protection goes away. The Apollo astronauts only had small increases in exposure since they were on the moon for such short periods of time. 
living on the moon will entail a completely different level of exposure, and if the sun has a major solar flare, it could send a large dose of radiation toward the moon. NASA and researchers suspect that heightened exposure to radiation could lead to damage to the central nervous system and affect brain function, according to Donoville. But ultimately, we don't know because we haven't sent people into deep space for long periods of time. In reality, some kind of radiation shielding will be needed, and Starship's stainless steel exterior may not be enough to protect astronauts for a long time on the surface. Experts have proposed lining long-term lunar habitats with water or ice to slow down these particles. But there are some elements within cosmic rays known as heavy ions that may be able to pierce through even that. Perhaps the best option is creating habitats that are covered in lunar dirt, which will require lots of excavation and construction equipment. Musk hinted in his latest presentation that SpaceX might do this too. But if that's the case, decisions on that need to be made well in advance before founding any lunar city. Mining equipment also becomes critical if this lunar base needs to be self-sustainable. Resupply missions to the moon will be much more difficult than those sent to the International Space Station in Earth's orbit, as the moon is days away in transit time. Astronauts at a moon base will need to rely on the resources around them, such as dirt for construction and potentially water ice to use for drinking and to turn into fuel. All of the equipment to mine this could be brought to the moon by Starship, but it's unclear what they would look like since no one has really operated such equipment on the moon before. There's also just the basic comfort of people to think about. Design decisions like lighting and the angle of chairs during launch can have impacts on how people feel and behave. Musk has talked about sending 100 people up in Starship, with each person getting about 10 cubic meters of space. Especially in a zero-g situation, that's actually quite a lot of room, claims Musk. These problems are really just the tip of the iceberg too. So much more will need to be addressed, just to start a lunar base, let alone send people to Mars indefinitely. Ultimately, SpaceX can opt to tackle these problems when Starship development is complete, but that will prolong when people will actually get to fly to the moon or on Starship at all. Musk says only 5% of SpaceX's resources are being used to develop Starship at the moment, which may explain why the rocket is the sole focus. At some point, the humans will need to be addressed though. It's just a matter of when. To set up a permanent sustainable city on Mars, we first have to get there with a crude flight. There's another step between now and then, which is landing astronauts back on the moon. NASA has set 2024 as its goal for that milestone, and SpaceX has said it hopes to land Starship there by as early as 2022 to help with staging and preparation for that landing. In the past, Musk has discussed crewed Mars missions also taking place as early as 2024, but that goal seems mighty aspirational, as do most of his timelines from where we sit today. Now that you've watched the video, do you think that becoming an interplanetary species would be achievable anytime soon? Let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the section below.